Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a progress update video for this 1-6 scale German SDKFZ 222 armored car. Since the last update video, a lot of progress has been made on the model's hull and in order to get it ready for the model's tin work, we'll be going over these additions in this video. The very first thing that is noticed is that the model's bodywork has been completed to the hull. This includes the removal of any remaining seams, joint line, and any other type of impurities which were left on the body surface. All of these panels have been thoroughly blended and sanded flush. In addition to removal of any seams, all of the weld seams have been added in their appropriate locations. The welds are sculpted with my usual epoxy and are sculpted with my usual method. Everywhere where the welds would be present on the real vehicle's panels are present on this model here. The welds were also sculpted on the rear portion of the model as well as the front. In addition to mounting on the welds, I also added another slit line on this portion here of the vehicle. As we recall, the 222 is actually, the main body is actually comprised out of several pieces. These pieces are actually bolted together via internal flange work. This is present here on the latter half of the, of the vehicle and also for this portion as well. The slit lines were absent on the stock kit and were added with that of the Dremel Multimaster in the exact same way that they were added in the previous scenes. This is a mirror image on the opposite side. In addition to the upper hull, the lower hull side panels also received their coat of primer. This is again in order to get the hull ready for its tin work, which once the fenders are added, getting primer to these locations here will not be as easy as they are in this current state. Moving our way to the lower portion of the front hull takes us to the, the guard and the front bumper. Both of these components that you see here were scratch built and were not supplied with the original body panel kit. The kit does supply you with a guard, however, due to the way the chassis was assembled, the kit guard was out of spec and was not going to be a fit. So in its place, a new one was fabricated in order to properly fit the chassis. The piece itself is fabricated out of a piece of Lexan plastic, which was cut to the proper shape and mounted, painted, and weathered to the vehicle. The way the component is mounted is just like on the real vehicle in that there are two steel L straps which are bolted with small hex fasteners. These components here then mount to the bottom portion of the front tow hook via two small fasteners which doubles both mounting on the armor plate as well as securing the tow hook to the frame. This is a mirror image on the opposite side. Also as you can see the plate is mounted on in an angle just like it is on the real vehicle. Also added to the model was the car's front bumper. The front bumper that you see here is all scratch built and is not part of the kit nor did the kit have any components that were to assemble this component here. The tire front bumper is comprised out of pieces of Lexan, PVC, and styrene. It is all assembled and all of the junction points have their sculpted weld beads present. The entire unit will simply bolt onto the front of the armored car. Currently as you see here it was just taken off of paint where it was primed, painted, and some of the weathering was added to the lower extremities which will make weathering and completion of the piece a lot easier once everything is fully assembled. For the actual installation of the bumper, it is done as per the real vehicle with a hex bolt and nut that runs through the bumper and into the chassis, which is fastened by a fastener on the opposite side.
This again is a mirror image on the reverse side of the model. By the use of a fastener, it aids in the strength and also the realism of the vehicle. Moving our way to the rear of the model, a lot of progress has also been done to this location here. This will include the fabrication and installation of all of the engine hatches, as well as the rear engine hatch itself. Starting with the rear most hatch, on the real 222 armor car, this portion here serves two functions. It is a armor cover for the engine, as well as it aids in the ventilation of the actual engine itself. The piece acts as an air duct and as you can see is hollow on the inside. Now also as of note on the 222 the original early production variants did not feature this armored cover slash duct. The original 222 armored car actually had a grill work which would have been this location here which was all that was protecting the engine from the outside environment. That was deemed to be a weak point of the design, so this armored duct apparatus was designed. In order to open the component, there is a small key and lock that is in the top portion. On the real 222, with a wrench, you would turn this lever, and the whole piece would swing down. This functionality was actually built into this model. By utilizing a Allen wrench, I can open up the hatch as you see here. As you can see all of the well detailing is present on this component here and was all sculpted on. Also the entire piece is fully functional. For the hinges I utilized the resin hinges from panzerwork.com which were utilized on the other hatches on this build as well. As for the locking mechanism itself it's a very simple setup. There is a simple toggle which pivots and locks onto a connection point on the top portion of the hull. And here is the bracket in closer detail. It is just a simple metal bracket that is bolted to the model's upper hull in the exact same way as present on the real 222. Now from my research, when the vehicles received this setup here with the protective duct, the internal grill work system was deleted. If you're building your 222 as a very early production version, you would leave the grill work here and be missing the external air duct. When it comes time to close the duct, I simply pivot it in its location and rotate the tool. Once the piece is locked on, it will, it's firmly held on and will not flop open on you when the model is in transit. Moving down to the lower extremities, takes us to the hinge work, like I mentioned before, those are from panzerwork.com. Also present is a axis panel that is also bolted on with fasteners, as well as two what I believe are bump stop mounts. The mounts that you see here are in the exact same condition as are seen on the real vehicle I was using for reference. Also while we're here, the small little portion in the center of the axis panel actually has an inlet that is carved into the plate. This again is also as per the real vehicle. Also mounted to the lower rear are that of the rear tow eyes. The tow hooks themselves are the kit supplied units which were made out of the same plastic which is used on the rest of the hull. The pieces if we recall from a very earlier video were very geometric in format but had the overall correct dimensions. What was done was that the geometric shape was smoothed away, as well as the elaborate rear portion was sculpted into the piece. Once all of the proper sculpting was done, the piece was bolted to the vehicle. As we can see, in addition to the side, the hooks themselves have been bent away from the center as they are seen on the real vehicles. Moving up takes us to the side engine hatches as well as side rear detailing. The engine hatch itself, just like on the, was mentioned earlier, is fully functional. 
and with the same setup. You have the Panzerwerk hinges, which have been added, and you have a actual locking mechanism. The mechanism itself, like again, is utilized by a small wrench, which goes ahead with a simple twist, unlocks the panel, and the engine hatch opens up. The hatch itself has a second interior plate in order for it to better fit inside the recess, which was added in a previous video. Also, here you can get a good look of the actual locking mechanism. Again, it's just a simple locking tab that locks on to this small little lip that's on the recess. Just like with the other components, all of the bolt detailing is fully functional and is also used for detail purposes. On the three engine hatches on the rear, there is a small little metal bracket which is bolted to the engine hatch itself and it, it protects and covers over the tool area in order to insert the wrench to open the lock. This detailing has been built into the model and is fabricated out of sheet aluminum. The component is a mirror image on the opposite side, the exact same functionality. Moving from the hatch takes us to this small little location here. As you can see, there are two countersunk slot screw fasteners that are present on the rear hull. These two details are featured on the real vehicle and from what I understand are used to mount a certain piece of equipment on the inside portion of the engine compartment. Moving along to the top hatch, just like with the two side hatches, it too is fully functional with the same type of features including the locking mechanism. Moving away from the engine hatches takes us to this rear quarter panel here of the vehicle. On the 222, there are two large flange type axis caps that are bolted on via countersunk slot screws. This detailing was built into the model and the flange detailing is also present. If I zoom in, you will see that the part that is welded in these four locations to the vehicle has a slit line in which then the cap would be bolted to it. Directly above the flange axis cap is another flush fit axis cap. As for the purposes of these two components, that I am unaware of. However, if anyone is familiar with what the purposes of these components are, feel free to label it in the comment section below. Finally, moving our way to the top rear portion of the fighting compartment takes us to this rear plate. This area here has been reworked from the previous scenes in which a plate was added to the rear portion. The plate is affixed on just like with the real vehicle with that of countersunk slot screws. If you look at the real 222 armor car, this plate is present and stands different from the rest of the hull top roof. The purpose of this plate is really to cover over the radiator which is located directly below this portion as well as give a support for the rear grillwork frame which was showcased in an earlier video. On the center portion here we have three rivets which are also present on the real vehicle and in the center here we have a filler cover cap. The cap itself is fabricated out of resin as well as pieces of metal. The component is fully functional in that if I turn the part, it is removable. With the piece removed, you can see access to the radiator filler cap which is located directly below. Currently, what's left to do on the hull prior to the installation of the tin work is that of the exhaust on the rear as well as the lights and visor detailing on the front. As for the exhaust, currently I have the armored covers which will be located in this portion here after the remaining of the components are fabricated. These components here are 222 specific and will be added to the East Coast Armory product line as soon as the other components are available as well. And that concludes 
this project update video for this 1.6 scale German SDKFZ 222 armor car. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. And don't forget to check out EastCoastArmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thank you.